So this is a slightly harder torque equilibrium problem. In a problem like this, um, the, you're probably going to expect anything between um, achieved and excellence depending on how far you get. Um, for achieve, the first thing they're going to ask you to do is label the forces acting in a situation like this. Now we've got a girl who's uh, standing on a bench. Now the force is acting, well, to begin with we've got a force acting from the girl and um, that force is acting straight down here. We also have a force acting down from the the bench itself and the force of the bench will act at its centre of mass which is right in the middle. So there's the, the force from the bench and we have two other forces acting. We've got the force, um, the support force support forces on each side, support force A and support force B. So support force B, and I'll call that F B, and on the left hand side we've got support force A. Now you'll notice that I've made support force A smaller in length than support force B, and uh, this is because the girl is closer to support force B Therefore, that support will take most of or more of the weight. Now, in terms of numbers, um, we're told in the problem that the girl has a mass of 55 kilograms and the bench has a mass of 10.6 kilograms. If we take gravity as being 10, then that means that the total force from the bench will be 10.6 times 10 which will give you 106 newtons and the total force from the girl 55 times 10 will give you 550 newtons at this stage forces A and B are unknown so if you've got this far then you've probably got yourself achieved the next step is to solve for both forces FA and FB and uh, like always with torque questions, it is all about torque equilibrium. And a situation like this, we will have torque equilibrium if the torques clockwise equal the torques anticlockwise. And if all of the forces up equal all of the forces down. So we're going to use these two rules to work out the value of FA and FB. Okay, so to make life easier, I'm going to add a few distances here. We need to know because torque is a force times perpendicular distance, we need to know the distances from the pivot points. And um, what you're going to do is choose a pivot point. So I'm going to make A the pivot point, which means that all of my distances are going to be measured back to that pivot when I'm doing my torque equilibrium calculation. Okay, so from, from the pivot point, that uh, 106 newtons from the bench, well, looking at this, if the whole thing's 4 metres, and we've got 0.5 metre overhead on each side, that means that between A and B must be 3 metres, which gives us a length of 1.5 metres, between support A and the bench. If the girl's one meter away from support B, then the distance from support A all the way across to B, I'm oh, sorry, to the girl, must be two meters. Right, so we know that torques clockwise have to equal torques anticlockwise. Let's start with torques clockwise. So out of all the forces acting, which ones are going to make the bench want to rotate clockwise about the pivot at point A? Now looking at this, we've got two forces here. One's the, the force from the bench, 106 newtons, and the other one which will make it rotate clockwise is the 550 newton force from the girl. So we'll break those up into two parts. So in terms of torques, we've got a force of 106 newtons acting over a distance of 1.5 meters and we have a 
force of 550 newtons acting over a distance of 2 meters. So doing a quick calculation here, we've got 106 times 1.5 and we want to add that to 550 times 2 which gives us 1259 so 1259 newton meters that's the total torque clock uh, total torques clockwise torques anti-clockwise we have got only one force which will act to make it want to turn in a clock uh, anti-clockwise direction about the pivot point and that's force b Force A will not make it rotate in an anticlockwise direction because there's no distance between force A and the pivot. So the torques anticlockwise are going to be force times distance. It's force B times a distance of, from FB all the way back here, is 3 meters. Okay, so we know that it's at equilibrium, which means that torques clockwise has to equal torques anticlockwise. That means that 1259 torques clockwise has to equal 3 times FB. If we rearrange this, force B will be equal to 1259 divided by 3. So we come back here and we divide our last answer by 3. And we're going to get 419.67. And that's Newton's. To keep it consistent, consistent with the rounding in the problem, um, 2SF, so 420 Newtons. Okay, so we're halfway there. At this point, if you were able to work out the force B, then you've probably got yourself a merit. Force B is 420 newtons. The last step is to work out force A. To work out force A, we use this last rule here, that all the forces up have to be equal to all the forces down if it's at equilibrium. So if we do that, we'll go through that working now. Okay, forces up have to equal the forces down. Let's have a look at this. The total forces up are going to be FA plus FB. The total forces down are going to be the bench, 106 newtons, plus the girl, 550 newtons. So if we want to work out FA, FA is going to be equal to 106 plus 550 minus FB, and that's going to be 106 plus 550. 50 minus FB, which is 419.67, if we go with the unrounded version of the answer from before. And if you do that, that working on the calculator, you are going to get an answer of 236.3 Newtons, which to 2SF would be 240 newtons and that if you get the the uh, both supports a and b that's going to get you an excellence in, in, in NCEA physics